This recipe for pot roast is part of the hashtag St. Paddy's Day food collaboration by Just Cook the Damn Food. Check out all the other recipes for St. Paddy's Day by clicking on that hashtag. And before you get into it on the comments, yeah, I know, pot roast is not Irish. Um, it slightly has European origins, um, but in today's world, we can associate it with American cuisine. But I think what's more important is the spirit of the occasion itself. We are putting potatoes, onions, and carrots, and as long as you have good food, good people around you, you can have whatever you want. And pot roast is just a really nice way to enjoy a special day like St. Patty's Day. It's not gonna ruin your day. Now I have to admit, I haven't made this before, but I took the help of my beef bourguignon recipe and a number of posts on Reddit, on YouTube, just to kind of put together the best version that would just suit my tastes and what I'm looking for a pot roast when it comes to my dinner table. I'm starting off by cutting all my veggies here. Nothing precise, just cut your veggies in large chunks. So don't worry too much about details here. Just make sure each piece is relatively even. I'm going for roughly one and a half to two inch sized pieces. I'm gonna add lots of garlic and um, for the mushrooms. I'm using cremini mushrooms and you can see they're pretty clean and these are cultivated mushrooms, not wild mushrooms. So you don't have to really freak out about washing these mushrooms until you actually see excess amount of dirt on them, which is unlikely if it's farmed. And now here's the big boy. So this here is chuck roast. You wanna first just pat it all dry, work clean, and then just add a ton of salt on each side. I'll tell you why we're doing it. But before that, just make sure you cover each side with salt. It may seem like too much salt, but just look at how thick that is. That, that's incredibly thick. So I'm sure you'll be fine just covering every square inch of it with salt. And then you let that sit 20 to 30 minutes. And as it sits, the salt is gonna get absorbed. You can call it a brine, but it's not really. And the salting actually will give a bit of a boost in helping to break down the collagen and tenderize the meat a little faster. The meat will basically absorb that salt. The salt will basically then push out any excess liquid and um, you wanna kinda mop that up. You want to pat it completely dry after 20, 30 minutes because that's gonna be a perfect setup for us to give that roast a really, really good sear. The drier it is, the better the sear. I would say the chuck roast is a much uh, tougher cut of meat. Um, it has great marbling all over, as you can see, and um, that's what you're looking for. You want a roast with marbling and uh, connective tissue. And this can be a brisket, this can be a rump roast. Um, I think there's like a bottom roast as well. Now my pot here, it has a heavy bottom. It's been heating on medium heat and I'm gonna add in some veg oil in there and then carefully put that roast in that pan and just look at the steam and the sear that you hear. Yeah. Now the reason why we want to sear it is because it adds a lot of flavor to the actual final dish. And when you flip it, just notice uh, the brown stuff on the bottom of the pot. If you don't see it right now, you'll see it eventually. That's fond. And fond is just caramelized bits of um, meat juices and fats and bits from the meat that just adds so much complexity, so much flavor, and you can't really make fond to add to a dish later. The fond has to come out naturally during the searing process. So work quickly here. Add butter 
that's cold right now room temperature it's gonna start to deglaze it but quickly add your veggies in before the butter burns and just give it all a really good mix it's gonna turn incredibly fragrant really quickly because that pot is very hot and once you start to see the veggies turning soft and becoming even more aromatic add in your mushrooms add in your garlic and then a really generous pinch of salt i added the mushrooms later because they will release a lot of water and that might affect the the saute that i want to get on the onions and the carrots i don't want to steam them i want to saute them and once those mushrooms have roughly reduced by half in size add in your tomato paste and you want to cook off the rawness from it the tartness that comes from tomato paste and then here is a very basic cabernet sauvignon wine add that in there and that's going to help completely deglaze the pan veggies the mushrooms they all did some job to deglaze but this will finish that job i'm also going to add in some worcester sauce and for those who can't pronounce it it's worcestershire pretty sure it's that then dump an entire carton of beef broth in there swirl everything around make sure everything is getting melded together and then carefully add that seared off piece of meat back into that pot right down the middle you may have to like wiggle it around and just make sure it kind of like is submerged mostly within the pot i'm gonna add some fresh herbs some thyme all around some rosemary all around and the slow cooking is where the magic happens so you want to make sure that when you're slow cooking the oven that you're cooking it in is not hotter than 275 to 325 fahrenheit that's your sweet spot and the temperature that you pick would really decide the cooking time and you can really cook it for as long as you want you're not going to ruin it so you want to cook it low and slow at only those ranges of temperatures so that the collagen in the meat melts away and all the connective tissues melt away so all you get at the end is soft melt in your mouth meat now what would happen and i've done this in the past where if you do cook it at a temperature that's higher than than this you may still get meat that's really soft you can you can like kind of pull it apart really easily because the collagen did melt but cooking at higher temperatures can result in ropey meat like even though it's soft you have to chew it and just work your jaw out and i've had that happen it's not it's not pleasant it's kind of deceiving um so just make sure everything is gentle moving forward I'm gonna cover it and my oven is at 300 Fahrenheit. Make sure you bring the pot up to a simmer, of course, before you transfer it to the oven. I'm serving this with some sauteed potatoes. So I just quickly steamed some baby potatoes, peel them off and just a pan with some butter, add those potatoes in and just get them nicely browned all around. Nonstick pan, it's gonna work wonders here and then just a tiny bit of rosemary, some salt, and you are good. That's all you need to do. And now we are about five to six hours later. Yeah, I got carried away. I'm like, let's cook it for longer. Let's cook it for longer. Let's cook it for longer. And I just didn't want ropey meat again. But this is what you want to look for when you know that you are ready. When you kind of poke on the meat, it should be almost ready to just melt away. Like just like just shred itself. That's what it should feel like. It should not feel tough at all. I also want to thicken that sauce up. So some cornstarch slurry is perfect for that. Let that simmer gently um, and that's gonna thicken it all up. And now it's time to serve. And just have a look here. Just see how soft that is. Like that's just like coming apart and I know from experience that this is not going to be chewy at all that looks perfect and this is again where the comparison with beef bourguignon comes back like it smells like it it 
almost kind of tastes like it. Of course, there's way more wine in my Bourguignon recipe, but it has the essence of it. Um, I can even see myself having this with pasta, like I did with Bourguignon, because it's just that good and it'll, it'll work really well. If you were to give me two plates, one with Bourguignon, one with pot roast, it'll be a very hard decision to pick one over the other, because I'd rather have both. Um, and this dish is pretty crazy. It's very simple, if not a bit involved, but it is so worth it. Once everything is in that pot, it's just chilling from then on. And this pot roast is the perfect vessel, literally, to a really awesome celebration, St. Patty's Day, Easter, Thanksgiving, Christmas, you can't go wrong with it. And you're gonna have fun making it, you're gonna have fun serving it, you're gonna have fun eating it. So go enjoy and let me know how it went in the comment section down below. I'll see you in the next one.